Welcome to a stationer's coding video of a smart canister filler. In this scenario, we have a atmospheric unit set up in filtration mode, 202 filters. Uh, the fil filtered output is connected to a tank storage. The tank storage is wired to the common cable, which includes a data port. We have an IC chip, and which has a program. We'll cover that in a moment. And D0 is connected to this tank, tank storage unit. So basically what it does is that when we plug in a canister, whether a smart canister or a standard canister, it detects the type of canister and only feels, fills based on the definitions within the code. So for example, it will throw in a standard canister. It will fill up to a little over 9,000. And if we put in the smart canister, it'll do a little, a little over 19,000. And if this wire is broken or you don't bother connecting it, then it defaults to the um, smaller canister storage, which is currently set at 9,000. So let's take a look at the code while that's running. This code will be in a link in the description and that link goes to GitHub. So you can uh, pull the code and if I make any updates, uh, it'll reflect that change. Now this code is designed to be simple and straightforward. I, I didn't try to pack it all in there, use a minimum number of lines and things like that. I try to make it uh, easy to, hopefully easy to read and understand. So we have the first section, which is the user configuration. We have the minimum input temperature and the maximum input temperature. So for example, let's say you have this in a greenhouse and you're pulling out CO2. And for some reason, the greenhouse gets way too warm or too cold and you don't want to pull in that gas at those temperature ranges, then this, this is the definition, it, it won't. If you want a wider range, you can just change it. These values are in Kelvin, and I have the Celsius values here. We have the pressure for the canister max, which is nine megapascals, and for smart is 19 megapascals. Now the maximum limit is 10 megapascals and 20. So this is about 1,000 on that limit. And you have to leave a little bit of slop because the gas is moving and by the time it detects that the max pressure has ended or reached and shut it off, a little bit more gas will keep continuing to flow through. So and 1,000 is more than enough, so it may go over like maybe 100 and if you don't, you think this is a little too tight, you can of course like lower this down to eight thousand, and then uh, you know like eighteen thousand, or whatever you feel comfortable with. So these are just definitions, um, just to find to make the coding below uh, easier. If you change these values, they get reflected in the coding. It also provides naming of of the values, so you don't see these what they call magic numbers in the code. And then we have hash values. These values come out of the Stationpedia. If you look up any item, it will have a, um, a, a name structure. And if you hash that, so basically it has a name and it has a hash for that item. This hash is that number. So instead of putting that weird number in the code, which you can do, you can define, just put, take the number out of the Wikipedia and store it in here. Uh, I prefer to just use the hash value. It's a, it compiles the same thing. Well, it doesn't actually compile it, it's interpretive, but we'll just pretend. All right, so we have the tank storage unit itself, and we have a smart canister. And then I have a variable, and then in registers, I typically, um, the registers that persist over a number of lines, I typically define those as uh, alias those. And I have a R prefix, so we have R max pressure, I just set it to R10. Typically for working variables, I use like R1, R2, R3. All right, so the code starts and we start executing. The first thing you do is shut off filtration. We don't know what's going on and, and much for the code or state. Now, 
Unfortunately, for a brand new inst uh, um, just built filtration unit, it will default to on. So when it starts executing this code, when you turn it on, it's you know these this should be all done in one tick. So within one tick, you know removing this won't make it won't make it any faster. Within one tick, it'll move just a little bit of gas and then it shuts it off. And that's only after you build it that first time. So the very first canister filled, you'll just have a little bit in that pipe. If you wonder why there is a little bit of gas in the pipe, and you if you haven't put a canister in there yet. Now, I put a sleep one sleep for a second because. When we turn it off, we don't need to be in a rush to turn it back on. So this is just an efficiency thing. Um, you could set it to like five seconds if you want a longer delay, but one second is, I think is reasonable. So if you put a new canister in there, it'll take about a second, you know, more or less before it figures out that there's something in there and start filling. But once it's filling, then we use a yield, which is per tick. All right, so we, the code falls down here. We have filtration off. We turn it off. We sleep for a second because you know we're off, so why not and save little resources. We have the main loop. So we yield. We want a tick to go by. Now we do checks. So we have the minimum temperature check. So we load the temperature input. Typically, like the way I have set up, that's just a, um, passive vent. This could be connected to a tank of gas if you're pulling from there. And if we branch is less than, so basically if the input temperature is less than the minimum, then we go to filtration off. It's too cold, turn it off. We do the other check for the range. If it's too hot, max temp check. We load, once again, we reload the value. Now, you could optimize and say, well, we already have zero loaded, but once again, this is not designed to be optimized. It's designed to be straightforward. And if the value, if the input temperature is greater than this, then we turn filtration off. So this is our score of safety, our first safety checks. Now we define the default pressure. So we load the canister pressure and we set that in the variable R max pressure. Now we start groveling to see if we have a smart canister plugged in. So first thing we do is, well, you know, maybe you didn't want to bother wiring it and configuring it. So if there's nothing connected to D, uh, D0, then we jump to the end. You know, there's nothing, it wasn't wired right. It wasn't, there's no wiring. Um, and thus it just jumps to the end and it just defaults. So if you put a smart canister in there and you wonder why it's not fully filling, well, you need to check the wiring and check the configuration. All right, so if we if we have something there, we load, we load a slot into R0 of that, of the canister storage unit itself. And basically what this queries is, this says, this prefab hash, this is the hash of what's inside that tank store. So whatever's plugged in there, which is effectively will be a canister or it'll be a smart canister. Really, I think it's only two choices you can put in there um, in doing that. Now you can, I believe you can actual name. So if you actually give individual names to your canisters, uh, this is advanced stuff. You can actually, using the, uh, the name, you can actually pull that out, that name hash, pull that out and actually do unique things on your tanks if you wanted to. But that's just extra credit. All right, so we grab the hash. So then we compare, is the hash, this, this constant that we previously defined, matches R0? So what we loaded, so basically, is there a smart canister plugged in? If no, we jump to the end. If yes, which means we fall through, we load the max smart canister pressure into the variable max pressure. All right. So we hit this. Our max pressure now has what we should use, and it's based on the type of canister. Now we do a pressure check. We load the pressure of the output. And then go ahead and compare it. So if the, um, the output is greater than whatever the maximum pressure is, turn filtration off. And if we pass all these tests, we get to finally here, we turn filtration on, 
we jump to the we jump to main loop which goes all the way back up here we do the yield and then we fall through again and it goes round and around and around so i hope all that makes sense if you do have questions or you want me to expand on something you know just point out the line section and i said this will be a link to github so you can pull the code out for that okay and so we didn't make any changes so we'll just cancel this out and if we look here we see it filled correctly as i said just a little over because there's a little bit of air movement when we shut it down so we'll do that one and we'll grab this and it'll start filling Now this um, playthrough um, playthrough list for the stationary code coding section, a lot of those are outdated, and I updated the titles that say they're updated. I'm going to go through them and verify they still work under stationary beta, and and make any changes. There's also some new features, new instructions added. It'll take advantage of uh, where appropriate. So now you see that with the smart filter, smart canister. It's now going past the original 9,000. And so what this, this, this code is useful for? It's useful because let's say you just had it hard-coded and you, and you switched to, to um, smart canisters. You hard-coded like, you know, 1,800 or 1,900. 18,000 or 19,000. And then you accidentally throw in a normal tank course without the check it would just pump it up to that value and go boom which is a bad thing and it stops all right so we have a full tank and down there now I could I had the cutters here so I was gonna cut the wire and run it again but it, it does actually detect if this wires cut and um, it will um, do the right thing all right I did test the various scenarios in the uh, code pattern. All right, so that's the end of this uh, video. I will be doing more, working my way through. If there's certain coding scenarios that you're interested, just put that in the comment and I'll see how that works out. Until next time, see ya.